friends welcome to online web tutor i am sanjay in this video we'll discuss a very interesting and a basic concept of code igniter 4 and that is how to work with form validations so form validations are the basic concept inside any application where we put form validations to validate user input values so validations are of two types first it will be client side or it can be server side so here, in this video, we'll discuss server-side validation using Code Igniter 4. Back to editor. So before starting the process of form validations, let's do a summarize that we'll cover inside this whole video. So first, we'll create a controller file. And inside that controller file, we'll have a method and that method will call a view file. And inside that view file, will have a form and that form will contain some input fields. So after putting all the values inside these input fields, then we'll submit a method of the same controller where we put our form validations. It means we are going to use server-side form validations. So after getting all the data right here in this controllers method, if we have any error, then those errors will be reflected to our input fields. So let's create all these things in action. So first, I will create a controller file. So back to terminal. This is our project terminal. So let's say that I will work on employee management system. So I need to create an employee controller and then accordingly we will create a view file. So here, php spark let's say make controller and let's employ i will pass a suffix flag it means it will create a file called employee controller.php so press enter now we can see that employee controller.php file has been created inside controllers folder go to editor go inside app controllers and here we have employee controller now inside this class, we can see here we have an index method. So inside this index method, instead of this comment line, let's return view and I will call a file, let's say add employee. And this will be our view file. And so let's first create that. So I will copy add hyphen employee, go inside app, views folder. And inside this folder, let's create a new file called add hyphen employee.php. So for now, let's pass a static message. Welcome to add employee form. So if I save and let's go inside config folder, I will open routes.php and let's say that routes, I will call get method. And here, if I will call, let's say add hyphen employee, so in that case, we need to call our employee controller and from employee controller, we'll call index method. Back to terminal, let's start development server. So php spark serve, press enter, development server started. So I will copy this project URL, copy link, back to browser, open a new tab and here let's paste our project url press enter so it will open the landing page and this refers to this url which is calling site controller and index method but i'm interested to open this add hyphen employee so copy that forward slash add hyphen employee so welcome to add employee form now next we need to create a form inside this view file so to create a form Back to browser, go inside w3schools.com. I will go inside this bootstrap section. And from all these versions, let's select bootstrap 3. And here, what I will do, I will go first inside this BS panels. It means bootstrap panels. And I will copy the code of this panel heading. So click in, try it yourself. It will open our editor where we can copy all the code snippets. So I will just copy all the code from here back to editor. So let's go and paste all the code here or what we can do. 
Let's go and remove the static message as well. Paste all the HTML here. And according to our need, let's update some structure. So instead of calling bootstrap example, it will be add employee form. Go here inside this div, it means inside body, div class container, inside panel heading, let's say add employee. Go inside this div class panel, panel hyphen default. So instead of calling class panel hyphen default, I will call this class called panel hyphen primary. And here inside panel heading, let's change to add employee. And right here inside this panel body class, here we have this message called panel content. So I will remove that. And instead of that message, I will go again to this w3schools.com search for bootstrap forms i will click on that and here let's choose a layout first so i will select let's say bootstrap horizontal form so here we have the complete code of that so what i will do i will go and copy all the code of that now next we need to paste all the code right here inside this div class panel hyphen body so i will go inside this div tag and paste all the HTML code. Let's format that. So here we have a complete form. So save all these changes back to browser. This is our output screen. So I will go and reload that. So here as we can see that here we have a bootstrap panel. Right here at employee, at employee. And here we have a form. Right now this form contains some input fields like a email field, password, remember me and a submit button. So according to our adjustments, back to editor, so here first I will go and put a hash symbol in for this action attribute. Now next go for this email address. So I don't want this password field as well as remember me. So I will remove these two fields for the submit button. So instead of calling btn space btn hyphen default, I will call btn btn hyphen success. These are bootstrap classes. So here we have our first input field that is email. So if we are working with the employee management system, so let's say that I will consider some input fields like name, email, age and designation. So here I will copy this div tag, pasting it here. And let's call it as the first field we have for employee name its name here. Next we need to go inside this type attribute. The field should be type equals to text. It equals to it will be name and also we need to add a name attribute and that is equals to name and in place of placeholder let's enter name value. So all we have done with the first field. Next we have the second field that is email which is already okay. Only I need to add one more attribute that is name which is equals to email and here we have type equals to email. So I will copy this one and paste after this email field and I will call it as let's say age. So here for its age name equals to age and id is also equals to age. And I will change from input type email equals to input type text. Also you can take input type equals to number. But here I will consider text field for this age input field. And finally one more field we want and that is for designation. So here let's say designation type equals to text. In this let's say name and I will pass let's say designation age equals to or its id equals to designation into designation and also this field is also equals to type equals to text. If I save all these changes back to browser go inside our output screen just reload this page. Now we have name equals to or input type text field age equals to or input type text field and instead of calling age I think that we did a mistake here because we have changed and the mistake is that we have two name fields. We can see here name 
and name so instead of name two times we want a field for email address and by mistake and actually we have removed or updated so after name field we want for email so name 4 equals to email id equals to email and also type equals to email in place of placeholder attribute enter email all we have done so if we go and reload now we can see name email age and designation now let's create a route it means whenever we submit the values for these input fields click on submit so where it will be uploaded so go here go to routes.php so as we can see this route we can hit using get method so the same route we can create by using post request so i will copy pasting it here and by using instead of get method let's call it as using post method it means when we load this page by pressing or hit enter using this address bar it means get method is working but when we submit this form using post request type so in that case this line of code will work so instead of calling these two lines for the I mean, same route on the only the difference is that the method will be different so what we can do here just remove this line and instead of calling two lines of code i will call a method called match here look at here we need to pass verbs it means i will pass an array and here we need to pass our request type so get post and in the second value we need to pass our route and it will be add hyphen employee and next we need to pass our controller so it will call employee controller and for employee controller it will call index method so instead of calling a single route two times means the first by using get method and the second using post method now we have converted into a single line of code it means this route we can hit either we can hit using get request type or using post request type and once we do this it means that we are hitting the same method of this employee controller so if i go inside employee controller so also this index method will be hit using get request type so how to handle that so i will create a if block so let's set this request and i will use get method equals to equals to post it means when we have submitted our form to this index method so in that case this if block will get executed so echo let's echo form submitted and for the timing let's exit from here save this change go here inside this add hyphen employee go inside this form so i will add one more attribute that is equals to method and i will call it as post request type because we are submitting this form using post request type and also go inside this action attribute instead of hash symbol let's say php tag echo and i will pass base url and in this base url i will pass add hyphen employee it means when we submit this form with our form input values it will go for this route add hyphen employee and this add hyphen employee route will be hit using post request type so in that case also we are handling inside this index method of this employee controller class so if i go here let's reload this page so without any value if i click on submit button also we can see form submitted so successfully for now we are achieving all about hitting a same method of controller using get request type as well as using post request type and now comes the concept of form validation it means that as we know that for this add hyphen employee if we are submitting this form without any value so instead of this message we want some type of error messages to this form it means user will not be allowed to submit this form without having any value so how to implement server side validation if i go here next inside this if block it means form is submitted so here let's say data equals to 
if I write this request get where and if I print let's say data let's see if I go and reload I am clicking on submit button without having any value. Now we can see that we are getting an array and inside this array we have name, email, age and designation. These are the name attributes of all those input fields what we have created inside our form. So as we know that we don't have any value so that's why all these keys are empty. So on the basis of these keys actually we can put our form validations right here inside this if block. So what I will do here, let's put first create our rules here. So I will make an array and here the first field we have called name, next we have email, then we have age and designation. So let's say that I want to make this designation as an optional field. It means either we can have the value or we don't have any value. But for these fields like name, email and age, the value is must needed. So here for this first field called name, I will put our first validation rule that is required. So here, same for this email address called required. And for this age field, it is also required. So these are our rules, what we have defined for our input field values. So I will go and remove that and I will use another if block and in this block I will use the concept of validate method. So look at IntelliSense, the first value we need to pass the rules. So already we have created our rules here, so I will pass rules. And I will put an exclamation, it means that if we have any error, it means we are submitting our form without having any value. So in that case, this if block will get executed. So this is a error block. So after getting any error, what I will do, let's return view and I will go back to our layout called at hyphen employee, but this time we need to pass our validations what we will get from our server side. So here, let's create a key called validation and in this validation, I will pass a method called this.validator. This is our object. By the help of this object, actually we can access a method called list errors. So as simple as that, inside this review file, we are passing a validation key which stores an object. And by the help of this validation key, we can call list errors method inside our view file. So I will go inside at hyphen employee and let's say that after this panel body or before form, let's create a PHP tag and here let's say if each set validation, it means validation variable is available. So in that case, for now, let's say print our validation because it's an object and we'll call list errors method. So save all these changes, go back to output screen, reload this page. Now we can see that this is our form. So I'm clicking on the submit button without any value. Now as we can see that here we have bulleted points and these are our validation messages. The name field is required, email field is required and the age field is required. And these error messages actually we are getting by the help of this line called print R validation and list errors method. One more thing, we can see that all the errors what we are getting actually we have printed into a list. But we want that each error in place of each field like this error message is associated with name field so after this name field we want this error message after this email field we want this error message called the email field is required so how to do that back to editor let's remove that let's go after this name field and here or uh, let's go inside this call sm10 i will add a br tag 
and after that I will add a paragraph tag and inside this paragraph let's define a span tag and here let's say php if let's say it's set first I will check that our validation variable is available if it is available so here let's echo or after checking the availability we need to add one more checkpoint here that is validation has error and by using this has error method we need to check that if any error available for this name field if error exists for this name field so in that case let's echo validation and it will be get error method we need to pass the name of the field so if I save this change, back to browser, go to output screen, just reload this page. And after reload, I will go here, click on submit button. Now we can see that after this name field, the name field is required. But we can see that it is taking an extra space. So what we can do here instead of this br tag, just remove that. And let's go also remove this paragraph tag. After removal of paragraph tag, what we can do here, let's format this code a bit here. So inside this span tag, we can see that here we have our first if block where we are checking all about our existence of validation variable. If it exists, then we are checking that if any error is available for this name field. So after getting an error message, then we have this if block and we are printing that. So what we can do here, let's cut this echo here close this php, open this php tag here and in between these tags I will use a paragraph tag then use php tag and print that message. Save all the code, back to browser, go and reload this page. So let's fill with means let's click on submit button without any value. Now we can see that for this name field, the name field is required. So the same concept we can also use, let's copy this span tag, go here after this email field and here only I need to change the field name that is from name to email after this age. Instead of calling name and it is for age field. So if I save, go here, reload this page. So I will click without having any value. Now we can see the name field is required, the email field is required and the age field is required. So what we can do one more thing here that we can add a class here. Let's say class equals to error. So I will copy this class error. Go here for this paragraph tag, putting it here and putting it here. Go inside at the top, inside this head tag, I will add a style tag and let's say paragraph class equals to error let's add a color and color equals to red so if I save this change go back to browser go and reload click on submit now as you can see the name field is required the email field is required and the age field is required and one more thing let's put any value for this name field email field and finally for this age field so we have passed some values for these input fields click on submit button now as you can see that here we have html error that is html validation and this is because actually we have taken the email field as input type email but let's say that instead of taking email i will take text type again go here let's reload this page so i will pass let's say one value for this name field second value for this email field and third for this age field click on submit but as we know as we can see that we don't get any errors it means form submitted so let's go inside employee controller and here inside this if block inside this validate it means this block has not executed because we don't have any errors let's create a if block which is a success block and here let's say form submitted if i save again go here let's reload 
one value, two value, three value, and four value. Click on submit. As we can see, form submitted. But also we know that the email address what we can pass here for this input field is also should be a valid email address. So how to add a form validation rule for email address? So go here for this email field. After this required, I will add one more validation rule that is valid underscore email. If I save this change, go and reload. Again, I put the value same 1, 2 and 3 and 4. Click on submit. Now we can see the email field must contain a valid email address and this is a server side message. Let's say that I want to put 1, 2, 3 and 4. Here I want to add one more validation for this name field that is the value what we entered here for this name field. The minimum length of this value should be equals to 5 characters and the maximum length equals to 20 characters. So how to add form validation rule for this name field on the basis of the length of the value? Back to editor. Go here for this name field. So I will add mean underscore length and put a square bracket. Let's say equals to 6 characters. It means the minimum length of the name value and max length. So it will be max underscore length. Put a square bracket. Let's say 20 characters. Save this change. Go here. Let's reload this page. So I will put let's say 23. As we know that which is not a valid value for this name field because the minimum length value equals to 6 characters. So when we click on submit button, now we can see that the name field must be at least 6 characters in length. And also if we put a long value, also we know that the maximum characters of this name field should not greater than 20 characters. Click on submit. Now we have another error, the name field cannot exceed 20 characters in length. So successfully now we understood all about our form validation rules. Let's add one more rule for this age field. So for now it is only required but as we know that the age value should be numeric value. But in this case if I go here, let's reload this page, I will put any value characters. This is string value. So we can see that in the age field we have passed a string value which is also accepted. But this field should contain only a numeric value. So what we can do here after this required put a pipe here and I will add one rule that is integer. Save this change. Go and reload. Let's pass some value here, value here, value here. So this time we have the string value. Click on submit. And now we can see that the age field must contain an integer. So this is all about our form validation rules. And one more thing I want to discuss in this video is that here we can see that these are messages and these are messages are system generated. But if we want to do our own message, it means we want to display our own custom message. Also, we can update that. So let's see here if I go here after these rules. Let's I will make another array for messages. So inside this array, same we need to put our field names that is name, email, and age. So let's say that to understand only I will create a required field validation message. So here, as we know that for this name field, here we have the rules as required mean length and max length. So here in place of this name field, I will create an array and put our validation rules that is required. This is required. This is mean length, mean length and here we have max length. And for this email field we have required, required and next we have the valid email. So same goes for age field. So let's talk about this name field required. So as simple as that, let's say field is required. For this valid email, if I put here, let's say, please provide a valid email value. So I have created an array where we have all those input fields and the required messages.
but I haven't used so far. So what we can do here if I go and check, let's click on submit button. So these messages, what we are seeing, these are system generated. But once we use these messages, so in place of required field, the name field is required, we will get the value as field is required and this is applicable only for this name field because this custom message only we have for this name and required attribute. So how we can use that? Go inside this validate method. So after this rules, inside the second value of this validate method, look at IntelliSense can also pass a message array. So here I will pass messages. So if I go and save this change, go and reload, click on submit button. Now we can see field is required. But once we go and check for this valid email, so for this email field, we have the message as for this valid email property, please provide a valid email value. So once we click on submit button, now we can see that please provide a valid email value. So successfully, we also updated the system messages. So these are all the discussion of form validation server side of Codeigniter 4. So these are the few rules what we have used with these fields like name, email and age. But inside Codeigniter 4, we have lots of rules available. So how to find that? Go here, just go to Google and search for code data for validation. So once we type this keyword, let's click on this first link that is code igniter 4.3.7 documentation or here we have the official website. So let's click on that. And now as we can see that it has opened a documentation of validation and as character is now selected so here we have a query string parameter right here inside this url so i'll remove this highlight equals to s because it has highlighted all the s characters so just remove and reload this page again so this is all about the complete guide of form validation inside code igniter 4 so i will scroll at the bottom of this page so here we have a section that is rules for general use. So it has provided the complete documentation of all the validation rules available inside Codeigniter 4. So here by the help of this video, now we understood that how to use a form validation rule inside our application and also we had seen the concept of handling inside our user view files. So successfully, by the help of this video, I delivered the complete and the appropriate content to use for variations inside Codeigniter 4. So please like, comment to this video and subscribe to our channel. So for this video session guys, thank you for watching and have a great day.